Hi, I'm Charles Arthur. I'm technology editor of The Guardian, and I'm here to talk about the Samsung Galaxy S4 and the HTC One smartphones. Let's start by looking at some phones that have come out in the past couple of years. There's the Google Galaxy Nexus S, Sony Xperia S, iPhone 5, the BlackBerry Z10, Nokia Lumia 920, and the HTC One, and the Samsung Galaxy S4. As you can see, the latest two are quite different from the others. They're coloured for one thing, they're silver in the case of the HTC One, white in the case of the Samsung, though you can also get it in other colours. But it's also noticeable that they're quite a bit bigger. The screen size is uh, substantially larger, which is part of the fact that they come out of Asia, and in Asia, larger screens are much more popular. And that's something which seems to be catching on more generally. So you can see it in the, uh, the BlackBerry Z10, for example. The size of the screen is uh, not quite as large, but it's comparable with the Samsung. HTC itself is coming out of Taiwan. It's a company which has been having a fair amount of trouble recently. A number of top executives have left. Uh, the company's revenues have been falling. Its profits have almost fallen to zero. And the HTC One is seen as its chance to really get a, a foothold in the market again. It's interesting to see what it's done here. It's going for a phone which is really high quality. This is a top-end device, really very much comparable with the GS4 and with the iPhone 5. It's priced about the same as well from, uh, from the larger carriers. The interesting thing I thought about it is that when you go to the front page, when you actually turn the phone on, which is slightly difficult to do because the button to do it is up on the top of the phone. I found that always very hard to get to. You don't have a list of apps as you do on the BlackBerry or the Nokia or the iPhone. What instead you have is a whole set of news items, a sort of flipboard-like way of, uh, of viewing news. So it's thinking about you wanting to look at content rather than news. The camera is rather well done, I think. It's, uh, it's a very simple camera when you when you come to it, but it does have all sorts of settings if you want to go and really knock yourself out. So you can do self-timers, you can do cropping, you can have different video qualities. If you want to get semi-professional with your camera quality, then you can. Yet at the same time, it's got a very simple setting so that you really aren't going to overrun and uh, get confused in what you're trying to do with it. As a phone, it's very effective, it's not too big, it's very light, it weighs about the same, I would say, as uh, the iPhone 5. They're very much comparable in weight. Interesting that it has an, an aluminium backing here, and it's also got Beats Audio, and I have to say, the headphones that come with it are the best headphones that I've used on pretty much any smartphone ever. They have a lot of bass, very clear, uh, they're better than many of the headphones you can buy in shops. They're almost worth it uh, for that part alone, I think and it's a beautifully made piece of kit. No complaints at all about the build quality uh, and the sound quality from the speakers. It's also got built-in speakers at the top and the bottom, which you can use if you want to um, be annoying to everyone else in the train carriage and play your music out loud. Again, the quality there is very good. Moving on to the Samsung Galaxy S4. This is the phone which Samsung is looking to sell millions and millions of. It says that it's uh, already shipped 10 million of them in the first month. Uh, HTC says it's shipped about 5 million in the past, uh, past couple of months or so since the launch. And what I found interesting about this phone is that it's a phone which reminds me of a science fiction story that I read when I was a child. Uh, it was written by Larry Niven. It was about discovering an alien artifact which had so many different settings that the people who were using it couldn't work out what the basic setting was for it. So one of the things that you find when you, when you look at this is that it has loads and loads of different settings which you can turn on and turn off. It has things like air gesture, which means you can wave your hand over it and move the screen. It has eye scrolling, so that if you move your eyes up and down when you're looking at it, the screen will follow you. Um, there are so many different choices that it becomes overpowering and uh, you find yourself turning it off. Um, Samsung is packing so much in that you can easily get lost in the phone. When you come to the uh, when you come to the home page, um, it's very simple. You have a few apps on the front. You've got the camera, some Samsung apps, uh, the Google Play Store. You have your usual messages and so on. I found it interesting that in the home screen, 
when you have the lock screen, you don't have the camera setting. You actually have to go and enable that uh, because so by default, you don't have uh, instant access to the camera, which I think a lot of people will find uh, is a bit annoying. You have to actually go into the settings uh, and make a change to the lock screen display so that the shortcuts are displayed on the lock screen. That to me seems like a, a bit of a mistake. One good thing about it uh, in terms of the design and something Samsung has had over HTC um, pretty much forever in my opinion is that you can turn the phone on or off uh, with a button at the side rather than at the top with the HTC One. Um, but once you've enabled the, uh, the shortcuts and the lock screen then the camera is available to you straight away. But here again is a difference between HTC and uh, Samsung. You have uh, the camera which looks as though it's pretty pretty simple. But then if you go into the mode setting, you have a ream of different modes. You have automatic, you have what's called beauty face, you have the eraser one, you have uh, animated, you have rich tone, you have so many that it becomes hard to know which you actually want. There's one called best photo. Well, what is it? It's a sort of burst shoot, which will let you choose the best photograph from it. But would you choose between uh, best photo or beauty face? Or would you actually want to have eraser? You might find that each one is appropriate for the same scene. And the difficulty there is choosing between them. You get into a position where you have so much choice, it's hard actually to make a choice because there are multiple opportunities. And I think that that's, again, the area where Samsung is throwing so many things in that uh, it can almost be overwhelming for the user. As a phone, it's pretty good. It's, uh, it's got good battery life again. It's uh, going to last you a day easily and uh, the call quality is good. Samsung's been making mobile phones for a very long time so it's very good at uh, picking up signals and so on. Uh, there are a lot of Samsung apps on this and uh, certainly one criticism that people have had is that when you first sign into the phone as well as being asked for a Google account you can also be asked to sign into a, into a Samsung account or to create one. That to me is, is an element of a phone which is not quite thought through. They've almost, it's almost as if they've rushed this to market, which isn't true. This will have been in the works for a couple of years. And yet I think we've reached the point now in the Galaxy S4 where there's so much in the phone that trying to pack any more in would be overkill. And to some extent, it's easy to get lost. Despite these criticisms, Samsung's going to sell a lot of these this year because it's a huge company. HTC has done well to get 5 million of the HTC One out there. It'll be very interesting to see whether the consumer take-up goes well. I have to say, if I was choosing one of these phones for myself, I'd be choosing the HTC One. First, because the headphones are so good. Secondly, because it's such a nice construction. Uh, if you compare the aluminium construction to the uh, plastic of the Samsung, which in comparison doesn't feel like such a great phone in terms of quality. And thirdly, because with the HTC One, you can find your way around pretty easily. It's not too hard and you won't get lost inside the phone.